Okay guys, I, I'm back. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, some things have come to my attention regarding some of these structures and uh, possibly what they mean. Uh, there's talk or a good possibility there's a piece of the puzzle that has been figured out. But uh, in relation to that, uh, this may have something to do with it. I'm not saying this is natural. It doesn't appear to be, but as you see in frame, there's two, two arches in front of me. The one on the right, right here. And then the one on the left, right here. And what do they both have in common? They both converge in the middle right there with a big debarked tree that well let's take a closer look at it as you'd see the debarked tree has got both ends of these arches pinned at the same location and if you use that tree as an arrow it's almost like Overhead it would appear as an arrow the two uh, arches Would be e each edge of that arrowhead and the tree would be That's holding both ends down would be the shaft of that arrow is the best way I can explain it so let's uh, Let's take a closer look There's the two arches in frame. And there's the down tree, trapping both of them at the end. Or right there. They're both, they both go under that tree, the debark tree. At the, almost the same exact spot, both, both bends or arches as some people call them. And here's the tree. Whether that tree was deadfall, there's the end of it, it was broken off some time ago. Whether this tree, what's left of it was deadfall and was dragged to this location is my assumption to pin down these two arches so let's uh, let's take a closer look As I clear away some of the brush, here is the smaller arch on the right going underneath this tree right here. And coming out the other end right here, coming out underneath this, the smaller arch. The bigger arch that I showed you on the left is right here in the foliage from it. Goes right over the pinned arch. There it is. Goes right over the pinned arch that's on the left here. So they both cross right there in this tree traps them both and basically or pretty precisely they're trapped at almost the same location so if i stand back here's 
here's the arches converging right here coming toward me and so I guess the next question would be what is it pointing to folks I'll stand back here and I'll tell you when you come over this rise right here and approach these two arches from the base as they're pointing away from you where do these two arches point to? if you follow them and go in that direction it goes directly to a path approximately less than a hundred feet on the other side it almost like it's an arrow pointing to the path and what's on the other side of that path I would assume if you follow it there would be more structure something I'll probably follow up on another day I'll go ahead and I'll see where it's pointing to goes across you know either could be pointing to the path or something beyond the path but that path is uh, the one I came off of and I circled back and found this pointing to the path I just came off of so again those double arches from a different angle the small one on the right right there and the bigger one to the left of it right there the much bigger one all trapped by this tree that I believe was dragged now the base of these arches these once were trees growing straight up out of the ground You look at distance wise how far apart they are from each other which I find is rather implausible that they would be both trapped by the same tree there's the base of the arch of the bigger tree bigger arch and then if I swing around to my right there's the base of the arch of the smaller tree on the right so distance wise uh, they're easily 15 oh even further I would say they're 8 17 17 feet apart from each other growing out of the ground and both ends of them were pulled down to the same point which is as you can see right there where the big dead tree was debarked tree was dragged I believe to trap them at that point to pin them down now if you were looking down from a drone or you're high up in one of these trees looking straight down at the structure it would be appear to be an arrow uh, almost like saying go this direction it's almost it's pointing you know and that's not to mention there is an abundance of leans also pointing that direction here's one up here leaned up pointing also toward that path I mean yes is it confirmational stuff in addition to the arches and the fallen tree very well could be the 
course I don't rely too much on the leans because we have leans pointing every direction in here I got them pointing east north south and west so guys uh, some food for thought uh, I'll catch you guys a little later I might resume this video if not uh, I'll uh, let you know bye bye well, I'm back guys and uh, we're gonna proceed out of here uh, and see what I hear or what I possibly find Yeah, here's what we're looking at. I'm going to use a technique I've tried before, which is filming behind me. Uh, plus, I can spin the camera around and film on either side of me, like uh, there and there, this direction. So, as I'm walking out, You'll be basically looking over my left shoulder to that side of me. And don't worry, that was me ste stepping on a stick, snapping. No wood knocks, not yet. I think I've said this before, I don't get in a, into a habit of filming myself, uh, primarily because it's not about me. It's about everything you see out there. Structure there, there, and obviously behind me. So we're going to as I always say, see what we find. Yeah, and if you're at, wondering where I'm walking, uh, I'm actually walking on a path in a public area that goes through a pretty old forest an old growth forest that's uh, with a well-groomed trail. I didn't want to, I did some bushwhacking off this trail earlier. You can see the trail behind me, or I should say in front of me, that's the direction I'm walking in and where I'm coming from. So we're going to uh, continue on. It always amazes me when every now and then 
I see these what I call potential bends as that one as in that one right there in the middle of the forest or right off the trail on the edge of the forest uh, with potentially no other breaks around it no other bends or arches around it uh, a manipulation maybe the wind just picked out that one and bent it over if it was snow load why only this tree bent over uh, I guess that's the question so get my camera adjusted there and continue on I'm still thinking about that twin or double arch I showed you earlier that was uh, had one tree pinning the ends of both arches down and trying to determine how that could happen by chance which I wasn't convinced it was chance it seemed too coincidental that both ends of the arches uh, were from two living trees that were 15, well, 18 feet apart from each other. They caught both bent down to the same spot on the ground and pinned with a big, what was left of a tree that could have been deadfall or, or definitely dragged to that location to pin those two arches down. So here's what we're looking at. I'll go ahead and here's what we're looking at as I walk out of here. This turns from a hardwood forest into a, as you can see, a pine forest. Zoom to the top here. Many of these trees are anywhere from 75 feet to 120 feet tall in spots. A lot of wind at the top of these treetops. You'll see, you'll hear branches at the top of these treetops, these pine trees breaking, pine cones falling. It can really make you think there's something else out here, but it's uh, just the wind, uh, a natural occurrence. As the wind blows through these treetops, if I could show it to you, they're swaying and you'll see pine cones and dead rotted branches dropping from these treetops. It's deadfall here in the middle of the trail.
I'd say it's a comfortable 50, 51 degrees in here. Still pretty much early spring weather. I'd say probably 80 to 90 percent of the time I'm usually bushwhacking through areas like this with pretty fairly thick ground cover. The ground cover here isn't too bad but uh, today I decided to take it easy on me on myself and uh, take a, a well used uh, people trail for a change. Here's some branches leaning up against this tree here, this old pine tree. This pine tree is partially dead, but you can see a lot of foliage coming out of the left side of this tree. It's still clinging to life. Yeah, we're going to, we're sort of Everything's starting to change now. We're going from a mixed hardwood pine tree and fir tree forest to strictly all pines. Mostly white pines in this area. And some of the shorter ones or smaller ones look like lodgepole pines to me. Uh, somehow they, I think they were I don't know if the lodgepole pines are common in Illinois or they were planted here, but I want to show you the, the movement of the air at the top of these trees. where I'm walking on this trail there's hardly there's very little air movement just a nice cool breeze floating through but two branches leaned up here probably deadfall from the top of this tree here. In fact, you can see a piece of that deadfall laying right there up in the upper branches about 20 feet off the ground.
I see these leans everywhere. I think trying to make the distinction between what was purposely manipulated, what was put there, and what was natural, trying to make that distinction isn't as easy as people think. Even like these two sticks here, somebody could jump to the conclusion that's a mini X. But just looking at it, I can tell you that that's nature does that and does it in abundance. When it's manipulated, there will usually be other what I call conformational signs, uh, woodwork near it, which tells you it sort of then removes the doubt from your mind that this was just deadfall or wind, uh, snow load, storm damage. Here's a break on the side of the trail here. I'm sure that happened sometime over the winter. Again, you have people coming up and down this trail. Did a teenager do that? Possibly. But then you go across the trail and about 18 inches off the ground is another tree stamp right over here right there both pointing to on this trail that one pointing onto the trail this one pointing onto the same trail It's been speculated that that's them telling us to stay out of the forest, meaning Bigfoot. Again, that's just speculation. That's what other people have said. I don't necessarily, I'm not necessarily convinced of that. They know humans generally will stay on trails and they don't have no interest of going bushwhacking, except the one 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 thousandth of a percent of the population or probably way less than that of people like me and some other researchers that do bushwhack make a small percentage of people that actually do go off trail even hunters stay to game trails when they're putting up their deer stands and they don't really bushwhack too much Guys, I'll be back. Windy today, guys. Yeah, it would have helped if I would have turned my audio on a little earlier, but yeah, part of life. 